Marco. Hey everybody, I'm back. I am continuing with building this cub. Last time I talked about it, I said to you I was using my own fabrics, which I was. I'm just not happy with the way the dark came out, so I cut a new dark so we have that shadow, and it came from using this template. Now, one of the things that you do when you're working with darks, this happens to be a Liberty of London piece, when you're working with dark fabrics and you need to trace out these elements, you need to be able to see where the lines are. If you turn the fabric over, see how much lighter it is? Turn the fabric over and trace, then you can get a nice line that you can cut. Now, this is a mistake I made, so it's really good to show you. So when I trace this out, I placed this here, I traced it and cut it. But oh no, look, it's backwards. So if you turn the fabric backwards, you have to turn your fabric, you have to turn your pattern backwards. So I'm cutting out this shadow in the ear of the lion cub. I'm turning my fabric, I'm using this ear, right? So I don't wanna get myself messed up again. And I'm gonna trace this, cut it, and that's gonna be that shadow in the lion's ear. I'm using a Frixon pen. Just cutting out this rough shape. I'm not too crazy about it. Remember, this is the hollow part of the lion's ear, and it's not an exact, it's not an exact shape. Just the hair. That's where the inside of the ear is. So now I cut it out. When I find my scissors. <laughs> Thank you. Isn't it nice people stop by and help you? It's great. Is anybody out there? You leave it common. Okay. So I'm cutting out this shape and I'm building this lion's ear. Now, when I finish building the ear, I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch it. Now, how do I know where to put this? I have my template, look, it's a photograph. Cut it out, I lay it right down on where the line is. I place that shadow in, just like that. I lift it up and I pin it into place. And that shows me where that lion's shadow is. I'm not using glue, I'm not using fusing, I'm just pinning these pieces in. Now if you notice, all my pins go straight up. The reason I do that, I'll show you in a second, is because when I'm sewing, I'm doing a meandering stitch. And when I do that meandering stitch, as I do it, I pull the pins and go. Okay, so let's step over to the sewing machine and I'll show you how I do it. This is the picture. So I'm gonna use a meandering stitch. These are my threads that you might see. Okay. So I'm here at the Houston, Houston International Quilt Market. The lighting isn't the best, so you're just gonna have to try to see what I'm doing. I know there's a glare here, but if I put my sewing machine this way, you could see great, but guess what? I can't sew. So, put the light back on, and now I'm gonna sew. So I pinned all of my fabrics with the pins going in the same direction, and I'm using a clear monofilament thread, and I'm just tacking them in place. Hang on a second. Okay. So I start at the top where the pins are, and I'm just putting these in place by doing a meandering shift stitch in clear thread. I'm not too crazy about it, where it's going, because I'm going to be using thread painting with other threads. Stitching right over, stopping and pulling out my pins as I go. And I'm just, look, see how it is, just a meandering stitch, I'm just packing it into place. No glue is needed, no fusing is needed. here and again I'm just doing a meandering stitch and I'm putting in this shadow in the top of the ear. Feel free to take any of my uh, flipbooks. I'm a new fabric designer for Free Spirit. You did? Okay. So I finished that, pull my threads out and if you look at it I'm getting that shadow in. There's the highlights. It matches my photograph and I how did I get that? I cut my photograph out to get that template. That's how I did it. 
So this is this. Does that make sense? And are you doing a camel when you come home down to Australia? I am? Am I doing a camel? Yes, are you going to be there? Yes, so you're your talk and I can't wait to come on my Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so excited. Yes. Next day, but Wonderful. I'm going to be doing the happy back, the smiling backpacker. It's a camel. Very colorful. Thank you. You're very welcome. See you when you get there. Okay, see you there. By the way, see you in Australia. Carol wants to know um, what you're using in the background. Is it yellow, orange fabric or cheesecloth? This is dyed cheesecloth. And this, I particularly did this cheesecloth because when I do a workshop, Normally when I do my fabric collages, I do fussy cutting of a gazillion pieces of fiber and you see these beautiful backgrounds. When I'm doing a workshop, we want some color on the background. I walk in the door with a white denim cloth with my drawing all drawn and now it's time to get started. What are we going to do for the background? I have found that dyed cheesecloth is a great way, great element to give it texture, excitement, and quick. Because if I have them doing that fabric collage in the background, it becomes a five-day workshop. We're doing this in a two-day workshop. So this is dyed cheesecloth. I cut up bleeding tissue paper. You can find it in arts and crafts. I throw it on top of the dyed this cheesecloth, which you can get at Home Depot, any box store. The cheesecloth, you can get a cooking section. I don't know, it's, it's just gauze and I spritz all this paper on it, I shoot it with water, and I get this gorgeous watercolory look. That is my background, okay? So now I'm gonna come over here. So Carol says thank you, and Maria from Rome says ciao. Hey, Maria from Rome, great to see you. I did four workshops in Italy. I've got lots of friends all over the world. Okay, so, again, just packing this up. Pull the pins as I go. No glue, no fusing. Clear thread. Get a lot. You can get away with a lot with clear thread, can't you? Now I'm doing the dark part. This is the shadow in the ear. Yeah, it the is. Way. It's the same thing. The, the background, I do a zigzag stitch with a clear monofilament thread. I'll show you the back of the fabric. It's a very good question because I get that asked that a lot. So if you flip this over, you can see all the stitching I did. Oh wow, okay. Right? So this is that tear away mm -hmm. stabilizer because I used to use a hoop and I found that on these smaller pieces, and my, my, my art's very large. But on these smaller pieces, I'm finding that this is replacing my hoop. So I'm now working with this. So Maria says that she took your rabbit workshop uh, yes. in Italy. Yes, in Italy. And Marion has signed up for your Lakeland, Florida one coming up. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm having so much fun teaching this class. <laughs> so this is the finished piece. It's a fun technique. It is fun. I have a ball. So that's my finished little lion. And I build it exactly like I'm showing you. So if you notice, I'll just talk about this. You see these, I pick fabrics because I'm trying to do the anatomy of the lion. So here we have the photo of the lion. And I'm picking elements in my fabrics. I look for fabrics that show motion. Look at that lion. See that big? Okay, see all those wrinkles at the top of his head? How do you get those wrinkles in? What did I do? If I cover this all with fabric, how do I get the wrinkles in? Well, guess what? <laughs> you take the line art, you cut slits into it, you lay it over top, and I will take this over top, and I will mark these areas. And then I will get in there with my RFL thread, 50 weight threads, and I will start thread painting this line. That's how I'm gonna do it. It's not something you do very quickly. This isn't one of those projects. That, but you know what? With a more practice that you do, you're going to get better and better at it. I love doing it. I'm obsessed with doing it, as you can probably tell. Yeah, and you clearly are doing it quite quickly. So I'm doing it quite quickly for a demo. <laughs> and um, as you can see on the cover, that, that big horse took me. But you know what was really funny about that big horse? I don't know if many people realize this, but Free Spirit sends you what's called strike-offs. Mm -hmm. So these are your strike-offs. You don't get these in your hand as a designer until August 1st. And when they send them to you, you get less than a quarter of a yard. You don't know where the repeat's going to be. 
Okay, and these are little bags that I had a seamstress, a very nice seamstress, Brianna Roberts from uh, Florida, do these for me. She's so cute and quirky, look her up. She does my patterns, she does my eyeglass cases. But so what I'm saying is that particular horse, this big horse that's in the front of that book, that had to be done for quilt market and I didn't have the fabrics till August 1st. That was a feat in itself. And normally it takes about four months, five months to do one of my big pieces. That one, I was just working night and day. So Kathy Clark asks, what weight denim do you use? Is it 100% cotton? This denim is 100% cotton. It's, see how it's flimsy? It's like, think of it as your denim jeans. You know, not those real dress jeans that are thin, but you want to wait. Did you feel this? I mean, it's, a, it's like a duck cloth. I would call it like a duck cloth. So, I think we're going to stop filming for now. We'll come back and I'll show you a little bit more later. Thank you very much for stopping by. Thanks, everybody.